welcome to Lakeview, and this is SMSU Art 270, and this is how to use hatch to shade with four values. You drew a picture earlier that was of a sea serpent, and the video abruptly stops right there because uh, the, the, the Castify, screen Castify that I was using only had a five-minute limit at the time. So I finish up the drawing in the next picture. So what happens is we were here. I'm going to draw a line that creates, and I'm going to draw a letter M that looks like this. I'm going to put another letter M on that line. And then as these go further down, they're going to get smaller. And they're going to eventually disappear, and we won't see them. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to draw a light line. I'm going to put a letter M. Put another letter M. These are kind of the stegosaurus spines that you see on a stegosaurus, and but they're what we're putting on here. Now, I'm gonna draw some lines here. I'm gonna do that. There's an M and it disappears. Now, I could put one here and maybe another bump right there. Oh, and you know what? I probably had my, van my horizon line was on my original drawing on that video. So there's my horizon line. Remember that all my lines were going to a vanishing point off into the distance. And so what we have here is we have linear perspective. Objects that are closest to us are larger. They fill the page. As things get smaller, they get closer to the horizon line, and they get smaller. So this is larger than this, so that means the tail is farther away. So this is foreground, middle ground, background. Now, we can even go further with background by adding just a light little line that creates kind of a mountain or some hills in the background and that'll help to create some more sense of depth now the other thing i'm going to add here is i'm going to put some a letter c right here and i'm going to put a bigger letter c that goes farther i'm going to do the same here and i'm going to do the same here but they're going to be backward c's that's going to be the wrinkle in the water so it's a letter c on this side on the left side and it's a backwards letter C on the right side. And that helps to create depth as well. And that helps to give that idea that he's in the water and he's floating. Now I could even go as far as to create waves with letter M's that are upside down or birds that are upside down. If we flip them over, they look like those birds that people make. So I could add those type of waves if I wanted to. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show that we have light happening. So I'm gonna imagine that my sun is right here. And because my sun is right here, I'm gonna get another linear perspective. So I'm gonna imagine a line that draws down and hits the corner of this. And this is gonna be a shadow. And it goes like this. I get another shadow. I go this way, I get another shadow. I go this way, I get another shadow. Now notice they don't go the same direction. Now there's an arc here, so I'm gonna see a curve, and then that curve's gonna disappear off the edge. Now, I'm gonna do the same to my tail. It's gonna get a curve, and then there's gonna be one that comes off of that. You could use a ruler at this point. I'm, um, I don't mind uh, either. You could freehand it, or I teach freehand right now, teaching them to learn to see that. Now the hard one is this one. It comes really close, and so it's going to go here. And what's going to happen is we're going to get radial. This is like the spokes on a wheel. They're going to be different. All right, now because of that, there's going to be some light on our creature. So I'm going to draw a line right here that represents the core shadow. And a core shadow is a line that is, and that line could be right where that one is. That and, and that one there. That is the darkest part of an object. So if I have an object like this and I shine a light on it, there's going to be a spot of shadow that appears on this. And I can't show that now with all the light that I have. But a core shadow is the, the spot that gets the least amount of white. And so taking my four values that I created earlier now, I'm going to shade this guy in. So I'm going to, I first could go, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So my core shadow is gonna be a four, so is my shadow that is there and there. 
The back side, the part that gets the least amount of light, is going to be a three. Okay, so now I could do the sun side a one. I could make these a two, one. Okay, now my horizon line is going to at least be a one because it's farther away. Now there's something in, uh, if you go outside and you look straight up, you'll notice that the bluest part of the sky is directly above you. So I'm going to have probably a three right here. It's going to go to a two, it's going to go to a one, and then it's going to go to a zero. The same happens with my ocean. My ocean is going to be probably a four here. It's going to be a three here. It's going to be a two here, a one, and it might go one all the way up as opposed to going to a zero, but we want just a little bit of zero so the one stands out. All right, so how do I do this? Well, I could start by, I could just put, if I go in the background, I'm going to start by putting my first layer of hatch across my water. And I'm going to keep it equal. And I'm going to go up a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to put, and I can go over the four here. I want to keep my values the same. So I'm going to keep making my marks the same. All right, I got my first layer on. Now I'm going to come back with my second layer. Now, remember, one was only one layer, so I'm going to go down here to two is going to get across. And I'm going to leave one lighter. Then I'm going to add some right along here. Okay, now I've got to add a little diagonal because two is four layers. So there we go. I keep adding. Two is going to be darker. It's going to be four of them. So there's my fourth one. Remember, I only use white as a highlight. So now I've got four. So now where I had my three start, three was 12. So uh, here I go again. I'm going to start there. And just that much shading already. Look at how much the sea serpent stands out from the surface of my paper. So um, I'm going to go... And I'm going to add three more, uh, a bunch more layers to this. I'll pause it, and then you'll see the third layer. All right, now I have hatched and cross-hatched uh, one layer for my number one. I've left that area white for my highlight. My number two got four layers. My number three now has, uh, it's got, I think it's got 11. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to add more, not to my three, but to my shadows to make my shadows stand out so they're going to be darker. So here we go. I'm going to go, here's my first shadow. And I could do these individually or I could do them as a whole. I'm just going to do it individually here so you can see this one stand out and then I'll come back and fill in. And you can already see now that this shadow, <clears throat> which would that would have been 16, And then I've, this will be 20. All right, so now you can see how much that stands out. Now I'm gonna do the same here and here and I'll be back. All right, as you can see now, I've started to put the shadows in. Notice I've gotten a little messy, but I can always use my eraser. I can use this type of eraser or I can use a rubber eraser and come back and erase out those lines. And I don't know what I did with my rubber eraser. I'll find it. Oh, there it is. I could use my rubber eraser when I'm done. I'm going to put a piece of paper over the edge like this. And then I'll come back and I'll clean that up. 
and you can see how that edge cleaned up really nicely. So um, I'm going to keep adding. So I'm going to make these since they're on the back side. I'm going to make them fours. So I'm going to hold my pencil the way I'm supposed to with my hand over the top. And I'm going to put, and I'm using my 6B right now. So I can make these. And I don't have to necessarily hold it the way I, because this is finer. So I not necessarily, but I'm going to, I can't get fine detail necessarily holding it this way but if you practice you sure can okay now i'm going to come back and i'll make these darker but you can see how those start to stand out now all right look at that that's awesome all right now i've got three up here i've got one to here so i'm going to put a layer of my sky arch in now here's the hard part with kids is they get a little too dark right here and you might have to come back with an eraser and erase it out a little bit, but that's okay. It's all they're learning. Okay, so I've got one layer there. So now I'm gonna put immediately, I'm gonna go to my two and I ask you to go outside and take a look at the sky arch. You'll see that the sky above you on a blue day is dark blue right above you and that it is, um, it is, as it goes towards the horizon line, it gets lighter. Now, I've chosen to only use four because I don't want it to get too dark. So I've done it like that. Now, I can go in and finish the rest of this, but I want to show you something. I have two devices here. I have a uh, what is called a blending stump. It looks like a cigar. And I have a tortillion which looks like a, uh, probably a cigarette. Uh, they are blending stumps. Usually with them comes a uh, an erasing shield like this that you will take, or erasing board, sanding board, and you can take and you can rub this paper on there and it will clean off the excess. Um, and you just do that in the garbage. Now, the difference is a blending stump is thicker and heavier so you can press harder. Uh, a tortillion is not as heavy. You don't want to use it like a pencil. You want to use it the same way that we scumbled before. And I'm going to show you how this goes. So I can take and I can blend it from dark to light and that'll make this really dark. So I don't want to do it that way. I want to start down here on my light end and I want to scumble up towards the light. Yep. And scumbling means that I'm going in a circle. And I'm going to scumble in all of the light first. And then I'm going to go to the next one. And by doing it in a circle, you can see that this really darkened up and made my um, graphite very uh, almost smooth. Now it looks like there's a storm cloud. So I can take a kneadable eraser and I could come in and I could start to pull off some of that if that got too dark for you. So these are tips and tricks that artists use to create different layers, different values. Some people guard it like a closely guarded secret. I'm for all about letting people know so that they can become better at drawing. Now, I'm going to go through and I've now removed a whole bunch of that. I'm going to clean my tortillion. And now I'm going to scumble a little bit of that down into my white so that it isn't such a hard line. So we make a soft line there. Now, I'm going to take some of this that's up here, and I'm going to just put it lightly into my horizon line. My horizon line has mass, so it gets a firmer line. Yeah, like that. All right, now I'm going to pull some of it out up here. See that. Nice. I like how that looks. Yep. So, again, if you make a mistake here, you can always erase. The other thing that you can always do is make another one. And people are like, oh, my God, I put so much time and effort into it. Well, you know, <laughs> that's with everything. Sometimes the first time I learned to do an Excel spreadsheet, I put a lot of time and effort into it. All right, so now. I want this guy to be threes. I might change that to a two, but I'm going to start by putting, 
this layer in. And that's going to be the shadow that hits him. Okay. And that gives him a little bit of color. If you want to talk about color. It's not really color. It is more like... Now, for him to stand out against this background, he's going to need more value. And you can see he almost, he's, he's perfectly camouflaged, which an animal like this would be. That's why the Loch Ness Sea Monster is not ever found. No, or Sasquatch, same color as his background. So that's why I'm putting this in nice and firm right now. I'm only going to put four layers in. And you can start to see he's really coming in nice. I'm going to hold my pencil a little more pointed, but I have to be careful. It's hard not to make. I go back to holding my pencil the way I had it before, and I'm going to darken that up right around those. Now I'm going to put my core shadow in. I had an art teacher that always said blast it in. And it's just going to be a dark line that goes up right along where the light is the least. Okay, yeah, look at that. Awesome. All right, so this is what I'm looking for when I'm talking for values. So I might put a little bit of value in on this side. And I might come back and erase the front so that they are white. Or they'll be they'll never be white again because you can't get it white, but they're a little blurred. And one should always have, I like to have a brush, and I don't know what I did with my good brush. I'm gonna use this brush and I'm gonna wipe off. Gotta be careful. So see where I wiped too hard and it made. So I got to come back and make my, now I could come in and make these dark again. They're going to be fainter as they go further back. So I might not see them as, but there it is. Now, last thing I have to do is I got to put my John Henry right there or John Hancock and I signed it. So just so you know, this is an example for the Mark Kistler. This is also what we do for four values. What this means is I filled my page. Notice I used the border. I can erase that out to sharpen that up, and I will. And the second thing, I filled my page. Third thing, I'm telling a story because there's a whole background. There's a whole bunch of things. I could put, to add more story, I could maybe add a castle. off in the background. Okay? And I could put I could put some birds. Now, notice I don't try to outline. I try to use my shading to make things pop out but there's a few spots here that i might use a little pencil all right so now it tells a story it doesn't have to be a, a big story but it just tells a story we've got a sea monster sitting in a background there's the princess's castle who knows maybe this sea monster is going to come and get that princess um old tale from all sorts of time all right so it fills the page, it tells a story, it has four values of shading, and I've signed it. That's what I'm looking for on your Mark Kistlers, and that's what I'm looking for on your Sea Serpent. Now, I drew my Sea Serpent not on a regular full size. 
I made it smaller for right now for practice, and you could do the same. So I cut my paper in half, and then I made the sea serpent smaller. So good luck.